meeting, June 11th. Has the meeting been properly posted, Lynn? Yes, it has. Thank you. Now would be the opportunity for citizens to address us. We have none here, so I will pass on that. We also have no bright lights this evening, right? So going directly in, oh, and first of all, for everybody that's watching out there, we have a new board member with us. Corey Matijo has just joined the board and is beyond this, it will be on this committee. Okay, uh, action items. We do have two action items this evening. Uh, approval of policy minutes from the May meeting. Uh, Diane, you have a couple things you wanted to? Yes, uh, and I've talked to Lynn about some changes that were, that were made in just the wording of some of the, the motions. Okay, so, and it's-, so it's She's, it's, she's it's, aware it, of the corrections, and I move that we approve them as corrected. Sounds excellent, I will second that. Um, I, I will take a vote on that. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Aye, aye. I'll abstain. And Ms. abstaining for Corey, that's correct. So it passes 2-0 in. Thank you. Okay, we do have two uh, policies to deal with tonight. Um, Corey, when you were talking to Joe, did you get into the three categories? You're all set with that? Okay, these would be revisions, so it's the one that's kind of in the middle. Yes. The first one that we're dealing with is policy 2431, Interscholastic Athletics. There are a couple revisions in here. Joe, do you want to uh, kind of tell us why this is coming up? Because I think that's of interest. Sure. So um, our uh, athletic directors, uh, we have uh, middle school activities directors and then high school athletic and activities directors have been reviewing um, our policy 2431 over the course of the school year. They work together to come up with some recommendations. And as you can go through the policy uh, and see, um, I'll just highlight the simple things first. Uh, they clarified athletics and activities, activity directors, uh, some titles in here. Um, they clarified school because they wanted to make this policy address both middle school and high school students so that this policy now addresses grades 6 through 12 instead of grades 9 through 12, which it used to. Um, they wanted to clarify some changes in here because there's no longer summer baseball and summer baseball was used uh, from time to time for students who were declared uh, ineligible uh, to re-earn their eligibility. So they took out... Um, they took out some wording in here that allowed for summer baseball to do that. Um, they uh, changed, um, so I'm looking on the, what would be, just so I can get you to the right direction, the second page of the policy. Um, they separate this out so that there are some things that affect high schools and there are some things that affect middle schools and high schools. Um, for instance, the grade point average requirement on the top of the second page, that's a high school requirement instead of a high school and middle school requirement. If you go down uh, to number uh, bullet point five, on the 15th day, the athlete must request a grade review from the athletic office. Part B is new, the impact of summer school on fall eligibility. So students mm -hmm. enroll in summer school may have their eligibility reinstated based on careful completion with like courses at the discretion of administration. And this only applies to course grades from second semester of the prior year. So the old, po uh, the old policy would allow for any course to be made up, but the athletic directors uh, felt that if a student failed a class during the first semester, they should retake that class second semester in addition to their course load. If they failed a class second semester, then the summer school option then would be an appropriate place to make up that failed class from the first semester. Um, they, uh, let's see, just going through here, moving on to financial obligations. Uh, and then, uh, so that one is staying the same, item C, Sports not designated as school sports by policy 5460. Uh, policy 5460 does outline our WIAA athletics. Uh, item D, students will be expected to perform in graded, in graded concerns or the designated uh, alternative. Uh, would you stop right there? Because sure. I had a mark on that one. I, I'm, in the previous text we had on that, it was concert concerts, like musical concerts. In graded concerts. That's correct. That's yes. probably the right thing, right? Cur yeah, we need to change that language to concerts. Thank you. I tripped um, on that one. <laughs> and then opportunities to attend overnight trips, special performances uh, may be revoked during the period of ineligibility. So again, if you're ineligible for the sport, you may not be able to make the trip. Um, say, for instance, for the wrestling team participating in a holiday tournament or something of that nature. Um, the code of conduct, uh, item C, um, 
on the, uh, the day of competition event, students must be in attendance for the entirety of the school day. Um, we've had some kids who have uh, tried to miss the day of school and participate in the event, so we're requiring full day participation. Mm -hmm. All absences must conform to the attendance policies, so a student who had a dentist appointment in the morning, that would be an acceptable absence. We're not trying to penalize somebody, but for the full day absence, um, you would not be able to participate. If we were to go ahead uh, then um, to the uh, bottom of the, the following page, um, so it, the sentence, any student serving uh, an activity code suspension, there's a typo there, it should be an instead of and, uh, must participate in the activity for its duration after the suspension has been served and finish the activity in good standing in order to fulfill the disciplinary requirement. So this is, again, thinking of the football player who also is on the track team. Uh, they can't participate on the basketball team for a short period to regain their eligibility. They must then finish out that season. Um, Middle school penalties, uh, they do not transfer to the high school. So again, they wanted to work with kids at the middle school level, but they didn't want to penalize them once they became freshmen in high school, unless it's against some sort of a behavior contract. So if a student got into you know major discipline um, and athletics were then compromised as a result of that, that may carry into freshman year, but an eighth grade student who made a mistake, a seventh grade student who made a mistake um, was suspended the following year, that penalty doesn't hold, get held against them in high school. Um, the, uh, the, uh, what would be the third paragraph on the last page of the policy, then the athletic activities director has the discretion to modify the first offense penalty as listed up to 20% of a suspension. Uh, uh, if a student self reports in advance of the investigation, the self report would need to happen within 72 hours of the incident. And the student must provide an accurate written statement that is full and complete as verified by the investigation. So um, what has happened uh, is, you know, administration is, you know, gets word that there was a party, um, is almost complete with their investigation. Rumor spreads if you, you know, um, this is just if you got caught, be honest, come forward, and then you know the athletic directors will deal with the the, the penalty. Um, there in the appendix below. Um, uh, you, you can see what is included and what the percentages are, uh, the 20% and 50% um, uh, uh, suspensions for the season. Key on that one also, Joe, is not that we, they want to move this out of the policy into the guidelines. Correct, correct. Um, due to the changing nature of activities, the addition of sports, the WIAA and such, um, they're requesting that the appendix be moved to the administrative guideline, which allows administration then to just add the sport in instead of having to go through the policy and committee. And the difference between those, to Corey? Sure. Uh, the policy is the board's decision. The administrative guideline is how Todd wants us to operate as a district. So it's, it's the administrative rule versus the board rule for us. Understood. Okay, thank you. So I commend them for their work. Yeah. Um, they, you know, they've done a lot of work. They've put a lot of thought in it. It's been collaborative across our high school. So it's not, for instance, Waukesha South directing this or Waukesha West. Um, they all put their collective experience together, administering athletics and activities in our district, and they're making these recommendations to the committee. I have one question, and I asked this of you previously and I'm still wondering about it. On the bottom of page one we talk about failing and slash incomplete yep. evidence IE and then on the next page we use the same failing and and uh, incomplete we use an F slash I. Why do they use one and not I would think they should both be the F slash I but I don't know what they're One getting. is a progress reporting and one is a final grade. Okay so there is a difference. There is a difference. Um, so the progress report um, the progress reporting grade um, uh, is referenced, I believe it's under the first bullet point. I asked Kyle Lemieux for some clarification on this. And then the, um, the, uh, the FI yeah, on point three. Number three. Um, that refers to what would be the final earned grade for the class, either a failing grade or an incomplete. Yeah. Okay, so they, they they did want it to be. They set. wanted it, it to be too. typo. Right. Okay, and and that's good. The other thing is not a change of anything other than 
at the bottom of that same page, quite simply, if you could, if you could make those columns separated a little bit better. To, sure. You know, it looks like academic decathlon banned all one yeah, thing. I will um, do my best with the limitations of the formatting for that program. Okay, and uh, anybody else have any things they want to? It worked. It worked. It worked on this Thank copy. You. It did. The one copy, the white copy that you have in your hand, comes from Google Docs. Yeah. The yellow copy is what Neola's oh, technology that's Neola's produces. Formatting? Yes. Oh, okay. So we may have to go do with what one you column can, there. Then. <laughs> Thank you. I will. I do have a, a question. Since this is the Interscholastic Athletics and Activities Code, could that be part of the twenty four thirty one title? When people are coming in to look for the, you know, how is my impact as, a, as an FBLA member, you know, since I used to be the FBLA advisor, you know, they wouldn't necessarily look to interscholastic ac athletics to be able to find the, the, the code that pertains to the uh, other, other, you know, programs. If the committee's comfortable with that, we certainly could make that change. I, I, I think it's, it's a smart suggestion. When I looked at the policies online, I, you know, I just look at the titles. You're, you're, exactly. You're right. looking for titles. You do a Google search for activity code. Right. You know, and you wouldn't, it wouldn't hit on this one. You know. I put it in there. I'm fine with that. So how would you propose it to read? Interscholastic athletics and? Activities. Activity and activities? Mm -hmm. Could I, um, and just to make sure that it's separated, uh, that it would be perhaps district activities? Okay. Uh, School activities, just to give it some sort of clarifier. That it's not part of the. Because wouldn't. We don't have inter. I don't believe we have interscholastic activities. Right. We have interscholastic athletics and district district, district activities. District activities or student activities or something of that. That sounds. Really we'll talk to the athletic directors uh, tomorrow, um, just to make sure that we capture their thoughts. Their, their thought on that and. And maybe student activities might be. Student that, activities. That's what you think right. it to be considered. Yeah, but then you're going to get into all the things that students do. Students, it's a district. Yeah, yeah district. Yeah. So. Right, and we'll we'll try to find the best term to go. Okay. To go in there, but, but we just, will look at that. Yes. Just yeah. as a Google search oh. helper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other things that could, this? Uh, Joe, you're right. This is a very healthy piece that they put together, and I and I, I laud them on that. Yeah, they did a nice job. But uh, is there anything more that somebody wants to? Just a, a question, yeah, if I may. Please. The middle school penalties provision, is that something new or is that just a? That is an ad. Okay. Um, that is an ad before. They never tied the day-to-day -day behavior of a student at school to their participation in athletics or activities. Okay. Um, and I think that given the changing times, they want to be able to use activities and athletics as a privilege for students that is governed by their behavior um, while at school. Right, and I like, I, I think that certainly makes sense, and I like the, uh, I guess, amnesty, for lack of a better term, makes sense too, because those are formative years, among no. <laughs> many formative years, so. And I like how it's worded at the beginning, that the privilege of participating in athletic programs and activities is extended to all students provided they're willing to assume certain responsibilities. Yep. You know, so like right up front, it's, it's just identifying that, it's, that that's true already at the middle school level. Okay, Diane, do you want to make a motion? I would like to make a motion to approve the um, new policy changes that have been, the revisions that have been recommended to policy 2431, um, inter interscholastic athletics and potentially activities. I'll second. Anything else, discussions, concerns on this? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? 3-0 Lynn. Thank you. Excellent. So okay. The next step for this is to go to the board and then let, a big thing is to let the school, the kids know when they're coming into the new school year that this, this could be you know, a, a huge part of what they're gonna have to be living Correct. up to. We wanna get this done well before August when the, um, when the uh, administration uh, gets the athletic handbooks finalized and then has their fall sports meetings. I hate to even say fall sports because it just turned June, but fall sports meetings, so which start in the beginning of August now. So right, right. Can this be expedited and be approved this coming Eve, is this on the meeting tomorrow? tomorrow? It's not on the agenda for tomorrow. Not on the agenda tomorrow, but it will be on the agenda for July. Yeah, that'll be soon enough for the athletic Is it, directors. You think so? Yeah, we talked yeah. about that, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they'll have enough time to turn that around. Okay, okay. 
They have some stuff to print it into also. Yeah, well, the, the nice thing about the way the handbooks and everything are written is the handbook will say policy 2431 right. athletics, and then that will direct them to policy 2431. Hopefully. It won't have the full policy listed in it. So okay. the board could approve policy or you know revise policy 2431 a dozen times over the course of a school year if they wanted to, if the board wanted to. Um, but but that would still have no impact then on that handbook. It would still be the student and athlete, right. and athletic director and coach's responsibility to say, hey, it's been updated, but we still list it as the correct policy. Makes sense. Good. Okay, we have another policy under revision, number 6325, procure, procurement, federal grants and funds. And my, my reading of this is they really just added a micro purchases to small purchases it's on page yeah so uh, as a result of our uh, ESSA the elementary and secondary schools education act or ESEA um, the uh, district was found to have to make a correction or an addition to this policy that talks about micro purchases and small purchases and so what you see there on the uh, would be the second page of the policy is uh, item number A, micro purchases, and then item number B, item letter B, small purchases. This is one of those auditor found errors that we need to add in order to be in compliance with the, uh, the federal grant system. And, and from my understanding of it, it doesn't cause any pain or anything. It actually makes a piece of it clearer that we're going to have a purchase under five thousand dollars and we have a different policy for or different rules above that but uh, right. yeah Corey, did you have something you wanted to this is basically obligatory yes have, okay right. right this is in order to do the corrective action for the audit findings we have to make this addition okay all right thank you Anything else okay i'll be seeking a motion for accepting the revisions to policy 6325 i will move to accept the revision to policy 6325 procurement federal grants backslash funds i second the motion and seconded by diane any further questions or discussion no sir all in favor please say aye 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 opposed three zero lynn that was an easy one Okay, we had two action items, and that was the two action items. In case you're wondering, Corey, there are times we'll have 30 action okay. <laughs> This is not always a typical meeting. Okay. <laughs> the, Freaking uh, easy. The, yeah, the, <laughs> the changes we made about, well, was it 2015 where we got into the Neola? Uh, we started in 15 on it, I think, yeah, and that carried us into 16, 16. Lynn, February uh, 16? We adopted all the new policies in February of 2017. 2017, okay. 17, yeah. yeah. So, and, it, and that was a boatload, so, but there's, it comes in waves. Okay, um, we did have a discussion item uh, brought on because of board members, another board member's question, policy 3131 reduction, in, no, it wasn't a board member, excuse me, uh, employee brought up a question on 3131 reduction in staff. And uh, Joe, you've looked into yeah, this. So we brought, we brought this policy forward. So the, um, the question that came up at a board meeting uh, from a retired staff member was the idea that people don't have a right to recall um, was was essentially the assertion that was made. And so there's a paragraph at the bottom of this policy that says no employee whose position has been eliminated shall have any right to be contacted by the district in the event that a vacancy opens in the future for which the laid off employees may have may be qualified. Likewise, no such employee is entitled to a future position or has provided any preference over other applicants. Any employee whose position was eliminated under this policy may file a grievance under 3340. Staff whose employment ended with the district due to a reduction in force shall not be prevented from applying for future positions within the district. And so it doesn't, it doesn't discuss the right to recall, but it also doesn't prevent somebody from reaching out to an employee who had recently been reduced uh, and, and saying, hey, we've got you know, a uh, you know, third grade uh, math position open, you know, would you be interested in applying? 
when a reduction in force happens, it's happening. It's an enrollment driven decision um, that, that we're saying we don't have enough students uh, to fill all of the classrooms for the staff that we have. Um, if we have recall language in a policy, um, one, we'd have to investigate, can we have it in the policy? Um, so that would require some investigation. Um, but two, how long do you let that recall last? Is it 30 days? Is it 60 days? And is that recall language then fair to the employee who's been laid off because does it create some sort of false hope that they may get a job that may not be there? And does it prevent them from then seeking other employment? So the policy is, you know, has, has been in place for us. Um, uh, I don't believe that there's a time in our recent history going back, I'd say the last six, seven, eight years where we've had any recall language. We may have before, but I'm, I'm not aware of that. Well, th this policy, based on the, the, the date here, has been around for seven years, right? Well, this hasn't been. That was Neola's language has been around since 2012. Oh. We adopted this policy as part of our policy work in 17. 17. Thank you. Um, but even going back before then, recall language, if it was in contracts prior to Act 10, um, I can't think of a district. I was an administrator both before and after the passing of Act 10. I can't think of a district that had recall language written in uh, as an opportunity. As an opportunity. Yes. As opposed to... We, right. We There's nothing that it. prevents us from saying we have a position open and trying right. to actively recruit people. Um, this last paragraph gives us the flexibility to reach out, say, hey, there's a position open. Would you be interested in applying? It doesn't prevent a person from applying who was a true reduction in force. Um, but it does say then that we're going to treat you as if you're any other applicant and make you interview for the job. I, I support the policy. I like the discussion of it. Um, I mean, the goal policy-wise to have the best qualified, best fit teacher or whoever was reduced for the position that very well may likely be the person who was reduced but if it may not so i think it, it, no preferential treatment um and no right of that person who was reduced to have a first right to refuse a position i think is is good policy you want to bring I, I i think one of the things that my concern would be is in the third paragraph the superintendent shall develop a process for the reduction of staff based on the best interests of the district and consistent with the terms of any applicable interdistrict agreements and applicable law um, with the most recent discussion of a layoff i think there was concern about what that process was and that it wasn't communicated you know, like the, the matrix and, and, and the, the specific process that was in place. Um, is that in the handbook? They, you know, that, that, you know they, they reference the fact that, you know, the, the, the superintendent is making that decision. And if it'd be in the handbook, then they would know what it, the decisions would be based on, that it wouldn't be arbitrary. I can answer that question if you give us a minute. Sure. I can take a look in there. But that, that'd be my concern is that you know it is the superintendent's decision but it, if it's you know if the procedure at least is spelled out of like how it's the decision's going to be made it'd be more equitable for all the people that are experiencing the, the we might have a layoff next year you know, do i have to worry about it now you're not saying in your question that we would always be using the same procedure though well there's they were saying they have a matrix that they're using when they're making a layoff decision in, in, the, in the case, the most in recent In this case. case, yes, but was that the case? Well, I think the matrix was designed to be able to be effective in that type of situation. And we've been lucky that we haven't had to deal with it since, you know, Todd's been around. You know, and that's, that's, a, that's a great thing. That's great news. Okay. Well, the one thing I'm just being cautious of is that we don't overly limit the ability of superintendent to do whatever he or she has to do. That's my concern. I mean, and maybe it isn't. Maybe that's not an issue. When this is, it's just discussion. It's not like we're yeah. mm -hmm. saying that the change has to be made. It's just that what I see as a reason for, for you know, concern about this particular reduction in staff, you know, policy. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly begs the question, is there a process? And if there is, what is it? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's great when you don't have to worry about it, but it, it, with our enrollment numbers,
dropping in the in the near you know in the in foreseeable future. Sure. This is going to become more and more of a you know concern for teachers. Like, do I have any? You know, what, what's what's the way, the way they're making a decision on how the layoffs are going to happen? And if it's based on certifications, if it's based on years of experience, if it's based on you know whatever the criteria is going to be, it was different when it was union decision, you know, and it's not controlled by that anymore. Longer controlled that way, so. Just give me a moment, please. Um. I guess as we're waiting, just for my own education please. discussion item, is that something that is just discussed at one meeting, or do we? It could. Bring it it could come up at a meeting as a, and we introduce it and then we might ask questions for them to do some research and bring it back at the next come meeting okay. it's not limited to one meeting okay. and how does it, something get it, in the other point on here this if you look at your your agenda you use the term discussion items parentheses items that the board or committee will take future action on that's not always the case that we have to take it for future action we may decide we, we we've resolved it Mm. Okay. All and right. For instance, like last last week, last month, we it was just more recently than last month. Yeah, but the idea of the dress code. We just wanted to take a look at what the dress code language was. Okay. And and you know because at the end of the school year, that becomes potentially with the warm weather, you know, sometimes an issue. Okay. Yeah, and it was just a matter of taking a look at it. We talked about it. You know, made it available. You know, I, but I think we okay. will be mentioning that in tomorrow night's board meeting. As far as how items get placed on. The agenda for discussion items is that something that has to be requested at the prior meeting, or is that? There's actually probably more than one way there. Uh, as Lynn and Joel get all of the stuff that's coming in from Neola, that's one way. We meet and we decide where we're going, what what the process is. You know, when we're bringing it here, when we're bringing it to the board, okay. which of those categories it falls under. Okay. That all happens in, internally here. We can have an item that comes up, as mentioned, from a board member, uh, from another board member that's not on the committee, as was the case with the dress code. The dress code. Or if something came up just that we think needs to be addressed openly, it could come from a, city, a community member. And that's what this was. Okay. A community member spoke at this one of the board meetings. Yeah. This one, the direction staff. And you know, because of their concern, like they thought that policy 3131 should be reviewed, we said, well, let's take a look at it. You know? but I, I would say that you know, from a policy perspective, um, I, 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 my opinion would be that the policy, there's not a problem with the policy. This, my, you're talking my, about back to this back one? Back to the policy 3131. It's not listed in the handbook, and perhaps that's a conversation for our HR committee to have. Okay, um, would be to you know what is the process if it's if it's needed, and and let the HR committee address this because they would they would be handling you know any reduction in force recommendations. Um, you know, they a lot of this discussion happens in and around when our enrollment projections are coming together and we're discussing the budget. So, you know, it may be part of a conversation at the Finance and Facilities Committee. But I think that the policy gives the direction that we need as administrators. You're to have a process in place. The process should be used, whether it's spelled out in the in the handbook or not, or whether there's justification for not putting it in the handbook. I think that those committees could then could then discuss that. I think to mention it at HR as, as a discussion type of item then would be Are you good. on the HR committee? No, but I go to them. Okay. I, okay. I, I, because of my daughter's uh, involvement, just, it does, I can't be a, sure, no, an no, active no, no. member just, of that committee. So I, I, just, I mean, if, if, if it's something that you're going to mention when you attend the committee, um, that's one way. Otherwise, I can let Chris and Sharon know. I'll, I'll um, just let them know tomorrow night. Okay. Is, is it a possibility for a discussion topic? You might want to follow up with Chris and Sharon also. Sure. Okay, anything else on, just on uh, 3131? No. Okay, good. Uh, we also have a discussion item there, B, purpose of the policy committee that Joe and I put that in there. Actually, Corey, for your benefit more than anybody else's, we wanted to make sure that you understood where this fits. And I guess one thing I would like to address initially is that this is we, we typically will have a new board member get on policy because policy is one of the primary things that a school board is here for. And the establishment of policy, revising policy, all, everything that goes on here. So it's a very good opening for a, board, a new board member to get a feel for what's going on, on on one of our primary responsibilities. And you've already had a chance to talk about some of that with, with, with Joel, so that's good. Um, 
Other, do you have a definition of the purpose that you wanted to share? No, I, you know, just to, to have a little bit of a discussion. Yes, I mean, policy is, um, if you look at our policy book, I'm sure you've gone in and, and looked, you'll see the zero series, which are the, our bylaws, all the way down to, I think, our 9,000 series, which is our public relations, the or relationships with the public. The, the way the book is laid out is how you would organize a school district, just to give you some frame of reference. The bylaws address the board and the board only. It's the board behavior, it's, it's everything else. And then the administration talking about Todd and, and, and the cabinet, um, and then the program, and then professional staff, so our teachers and, and, and such, our support staff, our aides, um, and then our students, and then you know so on down the list. So when you see some of the policies that'll, that'll come in front of you, you may see the same policy language in a 1000 series, a 3000 series, and a 4000 series policy. Um, each one governs a different section of our district, just to give you some perspective. Okay. Um, as far as our, our committee goes and the, the work that we've done, yes, I mean, tonight we had a handful of items. Um, that has been as high as, I think, 73 policies that we reviewed mm -hmm. um, a couple months back. Um, and and so, yeah, I mean, this, this committee acts as the, the vetting group that brings those policies then to the board. Yeah, as before, I threw my hat in the ring for this appointment. I did watch quite a few policy meetings. Did you uh, really? I, they're a little dry, Thank you. but <laughs> <laughs> um, but they were interesting. I did see the one. I think where Dr. Um, Cook talked about the SROs. I think this is the most recent one, mm -hmm. um, and policy. Big, t you know, big picture. That is a purpose of the school board to set the policy. Um, so it, it's interesting to me. Uh, my line of work is um, oftentimes reading legislation and reading laws. So it's, it's the particularities of it are interesting. Um, and it, it affects everybody. So I'm glad to be here and I'm it, looking forward to it. It really is. And I've been at it on and off several times, but it's, it's really quite interesting when you start digging into the things that we have some say in. We as board members have some say in. And I don't expect any new board member to go back and read, what is 400 and some odd policies out there? Approximately 400 policies yeah. on the website, right. yeah. But as they come due, or as an issue, maybe I should say it that way, as an issue comes due, mm -hmm. you, get, you go home and you, you pull it up and you say, what are they talking about here? Yeah. And, and um, you know, if, when you do that, it, and the, the importance, it, it's not quite as dry. The importance of our policies, <laughs> I, you know, if we ever run into an issue, a bigger issue where I have to reach out to, you know, the district legal counsel, outside of asking what happened, the next question always is, is what is the district policy? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that we made the change a couple of years ago to the Neola Policy Service is we, we are within a month or two, we are always as current as we need to be within our policies. Um, prior to that, we ran into a number of situations where the policy committee would be convened to address a policy that had been out of date or was you know, a couple iterations out of, out of you know, what would be current. And then we'd have to go back then and try to address the issue. And, um, and, and so this way we have stayed ahead of things. Um, Lynn and I got an update uh, two weeks ago, perhaps from Neola, where we'll be entertaining in the next couple of months another 35-ish policies. Um, those are all policies that due to either the change in language, uh, for instance, last year at some point, English language learners became English learners. So we had to go through and about a dozen policies needed to be updated. Um, there were, you know, there have been other things, um, the, the uh, US Department of Agriculture that oversees our food service. Every year through their audits, they change the rules. We have to come back and change the policies. Um, some of the things uh, this past year, we entertained the school safety requirements that uh, the Department of Justice uh, had, had given us. Um, that was a little bit more involved because it addressed about another, a dozen policies that we needed to have in place to meet the federal grant or the state grant requirements that, that we had been awarded. So um, it, it, there's a variety of reasons that the policies change. Um, I've often felt, why is this change coming forward? But at some point, somewhere along the line, somebody made an adjustment that we have to comply with. Yeah, the benefit of the collective knowledge of the, which I'm still learning these acronyms, NEOLA, yep. um, it certainly seems apparent. Um, and I, again, I kind of go back to my profession too. I've looked at bylaws and I've looked at policies that haven't been touched in 10 years and trying to make those relevant and applicable to what's going on now is, you, do, you just simply don't want to be playing catch up. So yep. I think it makes sense. When we went through the 
when we went through the uh, beginning, the use of Neola, that was the summer of 15, I think. And we we had groups in here all summer long going through probably 400 policies. Yep. Some of them, just flat out, yes. Some of them we had to make choices on because there were options that you wanted to pick from. And we had to pick the option that was most re relevant to the way we do things in Waukesha. And some of them we could bypass or throw out. Four hours we spent just on the field trip policy. Um, yes, that was, that was <laughs> one policy. 100% Waukesha. So, you know, we have the, a policy book that addresses our needs as an organization. Um, you know, as we mentioned, Neola is the, the service. Davis and Kilthow, the law firm, I think they're out of the Appleton area or Green Bay area maybe. Um, they're one of the firms that weigh in and draft the policy. Um, I forget the other law firm in Wisconsin that works with uh, with Neola, but it's Wisconsin attorneys working with this service to make sure we have updated information. Good, good. Okay. It has, e even though it's, yes, I suppose it caused, created more work, it's much better because we are, like you say, we're, we're not behind on stuff, and it's been vetted by lawyers. It has been vetted by Washington, D.C., because <laughs> they said do it this way. Right. <laughs> and you can tweak it so it's you know, special for it. Sometimes okay. we have things we have to put in there that are specific to us. Okay. Yeah. Very good. I think the other thing to share with him are the three tiers now that we have. Yeah, we but talked he, about that he, you know, he, from, a, orientation. Uh, from a new policy to a, a, a legal update to a, um, a policy revision. Um, and you saw a little bit of that tonight with the uh, the policy on purchasing, which is you know an audit requirement that that we got to move through, um, the uh, the policy, the uh, the inter interscholastic athletic policy um, that we need to come back to, you know that's true policy revision from our district. Um, but again, in the in the next policy series, you'll see things where, again, you're scratching your head as to why we have to make the change. I know that I am, and we just go through with it because that's what. OCR, uh, the Department of Agriculture, um, the Department of Education tell us we have to do. And sure. Yeah. Go ahead. Sure. And Dr. Cook was kind of, or kind enough to give me an hour of his time today. So we kind of went through that structure and um, he gave me some pretty good background. So I'm getting my feet under me a little bit, but it'll take a little uh, bit and, more uh, time. And you should know. And you're, it, you, you are welcome to ask questions. Okay. I mean, uh, I to sit there and think you're going to absorb this through osmosis oh. doesn't work. <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that prolongs meetings too much, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit in the beginning. But uh, yeah, ask ask questions. Be be curious. That's that's fine. And I think I like find my agenda. That was oh recommendation for any. Uh, this is another place where things can come up. As you were asking the question earlier, uh, at at the end of our meetings, we have an opportunity. If there's something that is of concern to you relative to a policy. Or something else. This is where you could bring it up, and then we could put that in for next to next time. We don't have a lot of those things, but here and there, I think you asked one one time. Or is that that's how we got? That's, that's how one. we got. Yeah, that's right. That's how we got thirty one thirty one on yeah. on here because listening you to it. what you know the people say when they have their public speaking opportunity, you know, okay. Okay. and then respond accordingly. So that's. So are there any recommendations for future committee meetings? It's okay if there aren't. That's not a bad thing. So. <laughs> Don't have it. I have a couple in mind, but I'll do my research to be, see if I can't get those answers. If I can't, then I'll bring it up at the next meeting. Yeah, and do that. Uh -huh. Do that. Okay. Otherwise, our next committee meeting would be scheduled for July 16th, 4 o'clock. And that's it's okay. It's 4 o'clock work, I think. Yeah, would I think be the, we've already cleared that, right? It does, yeah. It does. My, I, I blocked it all off. So Okay, yes. all right. It's, I appreciate that. It, that's, well, it, we appreciate it. We all that. do. <laughs> <laughs> Better than 7. You know, yeah. they, they don't have to stay here until 7 o'clock at night then. Sure. So, so. And uh, Benjamin's happy with it, too. All right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.